In between the Capitol and the city and county building were two tents, one blue, one purple, closed off to the public. This is just, it's super easy. It's not anything high tech. Betsy Kraft, a harm reduction advocate, said this is an example of what an overdose prevention center could look like. A place where people could bring their own drugs, use them with supervision from medical professionals, and also connect with resources if ready. It's an idea that is not allowed in Colorado and has been at the center of a long legal and political battle. We're good people. We don't deserve to die. We have a, we have a, a tool here that is evidence-based. Kraft, who says she has survived more than 12 overdoses. These are the people that have died from preventable overdose deaths. Is exhausted from the grief. You know, we've just lost so many people. She said she cannot wait around anymore, and neither can the addiction specialist doctors there today. This is part of a spectrum of care for people. So because we open up an overdose prevention center that can help people keep people safe. While on camera, everyone said that this was an example of an overdose prevention center site. And while it is, it was also set up in a high use drug corner at Colfax and Broadway where multiple people have overdosed. And according to several harm reduction advisors today, around 15 people were able to come and use drugs like meth and fentanyl with medical supervision and then connect to services. A site that at one point was quietly breaking the law while also surrounded by park rangers and state patrol troopers. They've killed our bill. Our legislators have killed our bill for the past two years. Kraft is talking about the latest legislation fizzling out with a veto threat from the governor. There was also concerns from both Democratic and Republican lawmakers. And going as far back as 2018, Denver City Council said that they would be okay with a site like this opening, but they never got the green light from the state over concerns of enabling addiction, a lack of proper guardrails, becoming a magnet for other crimes and questioning if this was even an effective solution. In response, Dr. Christine and his colleagues said a site like this is not fringe, but that it's actually found in multiple countries and other parts of the U.S. There are 11 countries that are implementing these. We have 150 sites around the world that are doing it, so we honestly need to catch up. What we know from the data primarily out of uh, New York City right now is that overdose prevention sites actually decrease the amount of uh, syringes, discarded syringes, and drug paraphernalia on the streets. So that helps keep the community safer. They decrease overdoses, and they actually do not lead to any appreciable increase in crime. And as doctors said, they support this as another option to keep people alive long enough to get help. All 15 people left the tent okay. That is according to the advocates who, because we were not allowed inside that tent. I did from afar see a couple people walk in. They also gave out 69 Narcans, more than 200 fentanyl testing strips, and say two people then set up appointments with those doctors for treatment as well. The advocates also said the legal waters are muddied because this week city council in Denver signed a proclamation to prioritize harm reduction and things like an overdose prevention center. We did, however, just hear from the Denver's mayor office. They said their first priority is connecting people with the proven treatment options, but that Denver has no plans to open one of these sites and will continue to work around the clock to help people through their Roads to Recovery program and all in Mile High. It's fascinating that this happened right in the middle of Civic Center Park mm -hmm. with police officers right nearby. Yeah. So people walk into that tent. Mm -hmm. How long do they stay there? How long are they supervised for? Yeah, you know, what they're seeing is a lot of people walking in and using fentanyl, which the doctors were saying in general when that happens, it tends to peak relatively quickly. So they'll be there under supervision. It could be anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes before they're allowed, you know, to be back out and make sure that everyone in the vicinity, including that person, is safe. And to your point of a quiet, it's kind of done quiet. Did people that were walking in around Civic Center Park even notice what was going on? No, we had <laughs> eyes on this the entire afternoon, the entire uh -huh. time they were there. There was people walking by, visiting the Capitol, huh. enjoying a beautiful afternoon, and it was just quietly right there off to the side. Wow. Why protest? Mm -hmm. Nusha, thank you.